All right, everybody. Uh, we are back with the top 10 perspective list for one January 5th, 2021. Uh, I'm Dino. Uh, we got the crew here. Does everyone want to kind of introduce themselves real quick? Nico, uh, your weekend update correspondent with Comic Book Invest. Uh, try to read my weekend update. No one else does. Uh, Brian McClay, check out the podcast. New episode Woo. dropping tonight. Um, so just glad to be here. Steve from My Bargain Comics. I, I'm one of Nico's uh, few readers. So uh, nice. that, that's it. I've got one. Yeah. Appreciate that. No problem. Thanks. <laughs> Hey, I'm Jessup, uh, Half Price Crook. Happy to be here. What's up, Hi, guys? buddy. Hey, guys. I'm Ben, Mr. Long Short. Um, I've also read Nico's blog, but I read it with wow. a, a screenshot from Steve, so I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for the print version to come out. <laughs> Give you a while. Okay, let's uh, let's jump into this stuff. So, as usual, um, we go in order 10 to 1, and uh, these are the books that we think are going to go become hot fire soon so i even though i put the the images on i am going to go with our little a little yeah, so number 10 so number 10 this week is moon girl double dinosaur number eight the action figure variant so this is one of the few action figure variants that's like sideways that yes. i really like one of the yeah, few covers it, it, that's actually sideways that i really like yeah, it's, it's a unique one. I, I think what's important in this book, you know, Moon Girl at this point was probably getting ordered to the tune of 12 or 13,000 copies. I mean, next to nothing. Surprised it was still going. Um, the qualifier here was you had to order 90% of the of the issue before, uh, two issues before this one, so issue number six at 12,000. So the print run on this, you know, the overall ordered was about 12,500. Ming is probably less than a thousand of these floating around out there. Um, you know, Moon Girl's going to heat up. Um, action figure variants are starting to to heat up a little bit, and uh, and and this is kind of a unique one that worth grabbing if you see it out there. Um, not not going for big money right now, um, but when Moon Girl catches fire, this will be one people will be chasing probably. I think if more now, people guys, do, I want to talk. Yeah. Oh, I want to talk I about just, uh, your action figure variant from last week. Remember, you picked the uh, the iron. Uh, what was it? Help me. Yeah, that was uh, Invincible was Iron book? Man number one um, with Riri Williams. Um, yeah, that book's um, you know based on the last report I've seen from. Um, yeah, how's it doing? Is, is at one hundred and thirty, and you could have picked those up for you know ten bucks, maybe less, a few weeks ago. I um, mean, th those were really tough to come by. I mean, Steve and I. We're, we're singing the praises of those books and, um, you know, people caught on and there weren't many lists on an eBay, but they are tucked away in back issue bins. But, but yeah, that book is gone and off to the races. Um, um, not saying that this book is going to do the same thing, um, but it's uh, it, it's definitely a cool one. And I think one worth grabbing if you see it. I had no idea this was a <laughs> horizontal cover because when I was looking at it on eBay, yeah, I thought it was a wraparound. They're all vertical. It totally changes. I mean, this would have been at least number eight because I, I know I didn't give it the, the best ranking that I should have. And, and now looking at it horizontal, um, yeah, definitely. It, it It's it's very unique. Cool. So that was number 10. Let yeah, me you guys don't have to count your wins. I will. <laughs> I know. We, we, we all know. We all know. Number nine. Number nine this week, our good buddy from Wonder World Comics. This is um, this is that Rogue One Wonder World Comics variant. So, yeah, it's a book I believe in, and I'm not a big action figure variant guy by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, the reason that I like this one is because you had to buy it at Star Wars Celebration in like 2015 when the only people that were buying Star Wars comics um, were people dressed in Star Wars cosplay. So uh, <laughs> for me, I, I think this is uh, a smart play uh, as we get closer and closer to the Cassie and Andor uh, series on Disney Plus. They are uh, not cheap. They're about 80 bucks, uh, but I think there's a lot of upside and there's not a lot available at 80 bucks. 
Um, but I think when they disappear, um, you're going to see people paying a ton of money for these suckers. Yep. I agree. We've been talking about these, um, what do they call these? This is the like the send away figure thing that they did when they first introduced the figures back in the day. And we've been talking about these variants. They did a couple of variants like this. And yeah. they were like, most of them were exclusive. And so, just, uh, just a my note is, I think he was saying, wasn't he going to say he's trying to put more characters on this one? They wouldn't let him? Is that? I recall the story, but I don't remember exactly what he said. He, um, yeah, I, so, yeah, he, I think you're saying he was trying to put more more figures on it or different ones, and they wouldn't let him or something. But, well, this I think Carter this asked style him why is called put somebody on there. the early bird style, mm -hmm. and, and that's fucking a big deal for Star Wars collectors. Yeah, and remember, um, action figure variants suck unless they're awesome, and when they're awesome, <laughs> they're awesome. Yep. Uh, you know what I mean? I, I think we've seen some good examples of that. The the Moon Girl Double Dinosaur uh, number 10 was beautiful. I, I like this one, too. Um, yeah. yeah, no, it's, it's dope. I like this one, too. And then uh, we're going to uh, number eight. So number eight is this is Moon Knight uh, 188, and it's a second print. Yeah, this pains me because I don't have one. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, these books were, these legacy books, a lot of them were done with lenticular covers, and they were really a disaster experience for Marvel. You can't see what's going on. Um, so they re ended up reprinting them with just the original art portion. The lenticular was, it was it was an homage to an old Marvel comic, and and, the, and, and it was basically, you know, you tilt it one way, you, you can see part of the image, you tilt it the other way, it's the new image. They reprinted them, um, um, just with, with, with the new art on them. And, um, and, you know, a lot of those books were, were really short printed and it become high in demand. This one in particular, uh, is super difficult to get super difficult and high grade given the all black cover. And it's obviously an homage to Bill Sienkiewicz, um, on the original Moon Knight run. So, um, you know, a real gem out there that you can find when you're hunting, um, but not an easy book to find in high grade for sure. Yeah. And can somebody help me? I think this is the first appearance of Sun Black Sun, Sun King. Sun King, right? Thank, thank you. Uh, who some are, you know, postulating may pop up in the television series. So I think it's a double bang for your buck. Again, I don't have any, and uh, I'm not real happy about that. Cool. Um, my, my local comic shops still have stacks of lenticulars because nobody bought right. them. They were hot garbage and so it it definitely stands for reason why you wouldn't order a second print of the book when you have stacks of the lenticulars still left and that's exactly they're, it just they're, they're not that bad i mean they're about 20 bucks right now i mean it's not terrible anyways uh here we go. well so i may i may have one before the show airs then uh, you know <laughs> that's why we that's what we do seven here's seven like everybody's gonna get epilepsy i gotta put a warning in here for it um, uh, Mr. Longshort, this is your girl. Oh, no, yeah, Gwenpool. So, this is the book that started it all, right? Not a first appearance by modern standards, but Gwen is so meta, she makes her first cover appearance before she makes her first appearance. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, this was um, a cover. Um, um, you know, Marvel was doing uh, Gwen Stacy covers. You know, this one hit huge, people were cosplaying the character. Uh, almost out of the gate, um, the buzz was strong enough to launch her own series, uh, or at least, or at least introduce her into Marvel and Howard the Duck, and eventually in her own series. Um, you know, this book isn't hyper rare, um, but but certainly not common. Um, it was a qualifier. Um, you had to buy 100% of whatever you ordered for Deadpool 44, and I think Deadpool 44 around that time frame was was doing about. Um, 50 to 60,000 a month in this book. Um, in this book, um, uh, uh, Deadpool Secret Secret Wars 2 did about 80. So if you back that out, maybe you're talking in the 25,000 range, maybe. Um, so not hyper rare, but um, but definitely an important book if you like the Gwenpool character, because uh, it was the spark that, that started everything else. And in a book that feels underappreciated, this used to go for over 100 bucks raw. You know, if you're, if you're careful buying it now, you can probably find it in the 40 to 50 range. 
Um, but if, if she puts up the game again, you know, this book's going to rise, rise in value. And, it, and it's an important book uh, if you like the character. Yeah, I think she's got a shot of being in Modoc, too. I, really I think do. so, man. I, I, you know, I, I follow the writer, and he more or less said, you know, Marvel gave him a stack of Gwenpool books to read when he was writing it. And he's all but said that, you know, she's going to be in it without saying it i don't know but like if you connect the dots it feels like there's a really good chance so fingers crossed on that one who's uh who's floating dead in the pool and does anybody know Some poor bastard that she chopped his head off i don't know i mean bodyguard maybe silly question i thought it was yeah. no, you're good. Uh, i never noticed it before, whoever actually. was in the chair before her <laughs> oh that's that's probably all right it's, it's a good one uh, i love this one this is my this is my favorite one uh, six. Um, we have Black Hammer number one, uh, cover A. I, I, don't, I don't know if there's a second print of Black Hammer number one, but that's his number yeah, six. There's, there's a cover B. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love I love this too. Um, I'm a big Jeff Lemire fan. Uh, he just put out some news, I believe this past week, about how far Sweet Tooth is in production. And then he's finished a couple of the scripts for Essex County. Um, this one's already been optioned for both a movie and TV universe. And about six months ago, there was a press release about a license uh, deal for collectibles. So they have a, a lot planned uh, for this. This is a, just a great read. Uh, you know, everyone's looking for a new superhero universe uh, and, you know, after the success, the success of the boys and Umbrella Academy, uh, I think this surely uh, fits the bill. Um, it, it is it's superhero oriented, but a, 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 a new take uh, as far as the the setting and the challenges um, that the the protagonists are faced with. So I, I really like this book. I think it's fallen off some of people's radar, you know, out of sight, out of mind, but um, they, they keep pumping out new corners of this universe. I just read a, a PDF uh, for retailers um, of uh, Pat Oswald is doing the first issue of a new, I think it's called like Black Hammer Visions. Um, and then also they're just finishing up the Skull Digger and um, oh, what's, what's the name of that book's, but it, it that that's a really good book it, itself that I that I've really enjoyed. So I think there's a lot of possibilities here. Yeah, Sherlock and, Frankenstein. Yeah, there's Sherlock Frankenstein. He's a uh, a villain, but he's also there's also a uh, sort of a, a love interest of one of the heroes. It, it, there's a, there's a lot of good stuff here. Um, there's like uh, 800 I, first appearances, right, in this book. <laughs> There's at least uh, what on the cover uh, five or six. So um, yeah, it's uh, there are a bunch of variants for this book too. Our buddy yes. Nate, um, I, I, he collected every Black Hammer issue and every Adam Hughes cover, but he he showed off his Black Hammer collection and uh, there's at least three or four other variants for this book too. I think there, uh, there's yeah, there is a, you're right. There is a convention one that is a homage to Justice League One, yeah. which is pretty cool. I'd like to get that. That's really the cool. Dustin Wynn cover too. That looks pretty sweet. Yeah. There's cool. a and then the Age of Doom has a con variant that's a pain in the butt to get. Um yeah, smart, smart pick. Okay. So that was six. Now we're gonna go to number five. Number five. So we got uh, uh, this is death. See death death mall two. This is you, Nico. You, you talk about this. Well, uh, Darth Mall two or Darth Mall two. Yeah. Yeah. So um, <laughs> there's Darth Bane and Cad Bane, and uh, it took me about um, six months to realize that they're they're different people. Uh, this character is super cool. He is, uh, the cowboy, um, uh, you know, like wild west, uh, star Wars hero. Um, the, uh, ratio variant of this issue has now started to pop up. 
uh, I was kind of shocked that somebody didn't nominate it. I think Jessup talked about, um, you know, thinking about maybe grabbing a copy. It's been so far down for a, a long period of time. There were none listed on eBay. It may have been on uh, the list last week. I don't remember. Um, this particular second print is tough to find and uh, tough in grade. So uh, it, it's, uh, it's a smart book. I like it. Okay, so we. Yeah, I mean, he's the kind of character who you would expect to see in live action, legitimately. Watch out for uh, issue three too. It's his first cover, and there's a second print for that one. Oh, nice! And, and it's a black cover as opposed to like a a yellow. It looks way better in black, and it's a ghost. Like, I, think so. I think there's one on eBay, and it's a self proclaimed nine zero, and they want fifty bucks for it. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, on to number four. Four is Howard the Duck. One uh, is this the second print? Yeah, this is the second print. So we we touched on on this book briefly when we were talking about Deadpool Secret Secret Wars two. Um, you know the, the the first print of this book is out of reach for a lot of collectors. Uh, By that a, mean you mean the ratio? The ratio, yeah. So there's a one in twenty five from um, from the first print. Um, that first print did around 60,000, uh, but that book's been gobbled up and disappeared. Um, if, and, if, and you know what? Honestly, it's not even a fair establishment for that book because Diamond gave us the code to add the Ron Lim Gwenpool variant one week before FOC, and a lot of people weren't even aware of it. And even if they qualified for the book, they just didn't order it. Yeah, they just, yeah, it's a great point. Um, great point, Ultra. Um, it flew way under the radar. This book is an interesting qualifier for it. It's actually a one in one. For every copy that you bought of the regular second print, which looks just like, you know, very similar to sort of the, the first print, you could order one of these. Um, retailers ordered about 7,800 of these right in that neighborhood. So about half of them are, are, are this particular cover. And I think this is the book that a lot of people are going to be able to add to their collection if they're interested in sort of collecting Gwenpool at a reasonable price. Um, but there's still some, um, probably some pretty good upside for this book. It's spiked recently, probably goes for 40 to 50 raw, um, probably has room to run if, if, if the character continues to, um, to pick up momentum. And it's kind of in a quiet spell right now, but, but, but a book worth, worth grabbing. Um, you know, if, if you like this character. And then the sketch cover kind of pops here. It's pretty cool. Yeah, you know what I like about Gwenpool is um, she appeals to my friends who collect comics like almost universally. Uh, not really so much as a spec book forever, but just as like, oh, have you read Gwenpool? It's exceptional. Oh, it's hilarious. Oh, yeah, you're getting back into comics? Here, read this. Or like, you know, quietly they collect these covers. And uh, now with the, the Pat Oswald animated series and, you know, some, some of the talking heads on YouTube, people are starting to pay uh, more attention to it in the spec community. So uh, yeah, she's doing a tomorrow at the end of um, Modoc Head Games 2. She's on the last page. And then issue three is all her. Picks up right where Gwenpool Strikes Back left off an entire issue. So sounds like Marvel's got some plans for her this year. She was sidelined for all of 2020, like most of us. Um, didn't You didn't see much of her at all, but sounds like she's going to get some love here coming up in 2021. Uh, number three. <laughs> you like that? It's the best one. <laughs> I like them all, dude. I know. Uh, so this is Invincible Iron Man number one. Uh, the one in 25? The call break? Mm-hmm. I'm getting better. Can somebody please. explain to me why this is cheap. So there, the argument is that because she only appears on the cover with the Iron Man helmet on this variant, she appears in the armor on the regular cover. She appears in the armor on the second print. She appears in the armor on the Divided We Stand variant for number one. So she appears all these covers, but she doesn't actually get the armor on until issue three. Yeah, I mean, I guess I get it. It's not a, I mean, this is a stunning cover. Um, yeah, that's my point. It's the best like looking. It. It's the best looking Riri cover, and by like a hundred miles. Yeah, it, it, it's beautiful. I mean, it. You know, it, it it sort of ebbs and flows. It gets spikes and then settles down. But you should be grabbing the. I mean, if you like Riri, um, you should be grabbing this book for your PC right now because. 
Marvel has huge plans, right? She's not she's got her own show, but then Armor War she's going to play a big part in as well. They've got big big plans for the character, and if you're into her, you know this probably you know probably room to grow on this book for a while. Worth grabbing now before it before it you know goes crazy. I mean it's it's a one in twenty five. The, the you know Invincible Iron Man did pretty well, right? It was a hundred thousand plus ish, um, you know print one type book. So you know there are some of these to go around out there. Um, but you know, it's not super common by any means. And as, as Nico said, it's, it's, it's her best looking cover, uh, by a comfortable margin and in, in, in many people's opinion. And I, and I honestly think that she may replace Iron Lad in a, uh, live action Young Avengers assemble. Absolutely. Totally. Yeah. In, uh, Ultra, you're hundred percent. I don't think that is going to, I don't think the Young Avengers is going to be Young Avengers one, right. From 2006, it's going to be some blend of a bunch of Marvel characters, 100%, 100%, I agree. Fire, I like it. Uh, number two is, oh, we're going back to old school, boys. We are going uh, Avengers Volume 1, number 48. Yeah, we don't do a lot of silver on this show, but, um, you know, uh, Black Knight um, is supposed to have a big role in the MCU for the next next run, right? This book is relatively um, underappreciated in, in that regard. I mean, if he becomes sort of like a Thor type character and for 10 or 12 years in the MCU, this book could have a long way to go. Um, um, but, you know, you know, Eternals having sort of been forgotten about for the most part, um, you know, th this book has sort of sat quiet. Um, for a while, but um, but but could have some some good potential um, if this character hangs around for um, a couple of phases in Marvel, which Feige indicated when they when they got Kit, Kit Harrington to take the, over the role, and you don't usually land an actor like that just for one movie. So it it, it, it would seem to fit that that Black Knight is going to be in the MCU for a while. If he's around, you know his popularity is going to grow, and this book should grow along with it. If you'd have told me that I'd be buying Black Knight comic books when I was a little kid, I'd have told you that you were stupid. <laughs> um, and legitimately, off the top of my head, I can think of four of the best like minds in comics that I know that have purchased a copy of this book in the last three weeks because it's so cheap. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, listen, I, I don't think it's necessarily a bad bet at all. Um, listen, plans change, but they indicated, you know, strongly that this character is going to be around for a long time. The more you see him, you know, the more popular they get. So it might not be a bad pickup at this point. Tough to and, find him. Oh, ain't that the truth? Number one Star Wars number two from 1977. Uh, I see this as a monster, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Chewbacca and Han Solo, right? Well, Amen. and Obi Wan. I mean, I think Obi Wan. Obi Wan. Obi -Wan yeah. Yeah. Amen. Um, right. I mean, he. Listen, I'm not the biggest Star Wars guy. I'll be first to admit it. But I think within sort of the the the, the pantheon of Star Wars characters, I mean, he uh, he's that? a giant, right? I mean, he's been ha had his own trilogy in the prequels. Feel what you want about them. Certainly had. Um, a, a pivotal role in the original trilogy, getting his own TV show. I mean, that character alone can carry this book. Um, not to mention Han Solo, who's a, you know obviously a legend in their own right, along with Chewbacca. Uh, a, a big, 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 big book that I think people um, don't give the respect it deserves because it's, it's issue number two, right? Issue number one. When Star Wars was cold, even hardcore comic collectors were still chasing Star Wars number one and had forgotten about this one. And uh, obviously people are waking up to it now, um, but you know, th 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 this could run for a while if Star Wars continues to run. It's and interesting that the, the group that we have, right, which certainly isn't just the people on the screen, but there's a ton of us from all different backgrounds put this book number one. Like when I was looking at the list of how people voted, I, I was just astonished that everybody's like, oh, people are paying attention to Star Wars first appearances for the first time ever. This is an ignored book. This is a monster number one. Yeah, it, was a, it was a revelation, uh, you know, to me and I think some other people. It just all of a sudden it was like, 
Oh yeah, right. Okay, Star Star Wars number two, Obi Wan. You know, it just yeah, I I think it just it's flown under the radar. Well, and we're gonna get Obi Wan for sure. But I'm sorry, Ultra. I didn't mean to interrupt you. But uh, we're we're gonna get Han Solo and Chewbacca allegedly, according to the insiders, later in time. So it's gonna get that immediate bump. Uh, price will solidify, and then I think it's gonna get a secondary bump as soon as they announce that they're gonna do more with you know those characters. Well, what I was going to say is uh, I want to remind people about the many different reprints of this book. And when you're going and diving for them, not only are you looking for the reprint, but there is an astronomically more rare book version. It is the 35 cent price variant. And that was in select markets like Niagara Falls in California. So if you're fortunate enough to live in those areas and go back issue diving, keep your eyes peeled for that. Because I think uh, I think right now you can obtain a 30 cent 9.8 for like $500. But I think the cheapest 35 cent is 3900 there, There's one I'm looking at that sold for... 300 372 264 roughly but now since all this there was an offer for on december 1st for 600 bucks december 8th for 700 december 18th for 800 now december 18th for 1100 and it still hasn't sold so um here's kind of the thing i think uh people know about the 35 price cent variant for issue number one you're not going to catch a lot of uh, retailers and brick and mortar guys snoozing about it. They don't know so much about issue number two. You got a shot, so uh, because the please. reprints, the, the reprints were thirty-five cents also, and that's the reason why it'll sometimes slip through through the radar and wind up on the wall or in the back of your bed. Not a diamond box. You're looking also for the square. <laughs> Be aware. I think it, I think it switched to like issue five or six to thirty five cents. Also, yeah. uh, those test markets paid off, and they finally did switch. <laughs> to 35 cents. Cool. All right, boys. We appreciate everybody on the channel, and uh, this is the list. And uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna head out. So we appreciate everybody and their contributions to the channel, and everybody who makes up the list. And we're out. So here we go.